couple other empirical formula. This is an alkyne, which is meaningless for you, I guess. But what's important, we have 11.18% hydrogen. Uh, we know the molar mass, we're not, it's not necessary for the empirical formula. So what we're going to do, again, we're going backwards from percent mass. And when we do that, uh, what is common to do is just say, well, this is 11.18 uh, grams of hydrogen. Then, let's say I wanted to find the grams of carbon. Anybody, how do you think I would do that? Subtract from 100, because there's only carbon and hydrogen left. So what is that? 88.82 grams of carbon. Now you go back to the concept of, wait a minute, any molecule, these two are going to be via moles. Mm -hmm. So these are mole kind of ratios, if you want. So I need to change all this to moles, and then I've got x and y. So for the hydrogen, it's 1.008 grams per mole to get the moles of hydrogen. And for carbon, I multiply from the periodic table uh, grams in the denominator, 12.01 grams per mole. And that will get moles of carbon. Let's see what we get here. Okay, even better. I don't even have to think. How much? 11.09. 0.09. And then how about carbon? Uh, 7.396. 7.39 or 7.40 is fine. So now I've got the moles. I've got on the top y and on the bottom x from this x and y over here. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm just going to divide by the smallest, which would be the 7. So I've got C, 7.40, H, 11.09, divided by the 7.40. So I'll get carbon 1, H. Well, I'll see if I find it or you calculate it first. I got 1.5. Now hopefully you look at that and say, okay, according to multiple proportions, I can't have a fraction as a subscript. So multiply by 2. And that will transform this into C2H3. That's my answer for the empirical formula. Do you want me to do the other part too? Oh, no.